Welcome to Audible Sportscast, your home for all things sports. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode. We have Cody and Jeff here today. And before we begin, just want to let you know that we will be doing a live draft special for everybody. So if you want to come by, that'll be on YouTube with youtube.com forward slash Audible Sportscast. Um, look, look at our social medias for more information as it comes. But yeah, that'll be draft night thir- today, this Thursday, when it comes out, you know, when this comes out. So just keep an eye on that. It'll be all over our social media. So if you follow our social medias, which are always linked down below, and hey, look at our TikTok too. We started posting some stuff to get into that game. So it'll be posted there. It'll be posted everywhere. So just come chill have draft questions ask watch the draft with us you know just come have a good time talk sports you know how it goes so speaking of how things go finally Aaron Rodgers trades the New York Jets um it's felt like eternity since we've started really talking about this but um the final trade is as this is the compensation for it before we dive into it the New York Jets get Aaron Rodgers a 2023 fifth round pick and a first round pick swap with the Packers. So the Jets get the 15th, Packers get the 13th, but the Packers also get a 2023 second round pick, which is 42 overall, a sixth round pick, which is like 207, and then a conditional 2024 second round pick that if Aaron Rodgers plays 65% of the plays this upcoming year, it turns into a first. Now I ask you, Cody, who won the trade? I see mixed uh, answers on this, and I think it was pretty a pretty oh, all right trade, to be honest. It was better than I thought it would be. I, I, I mean, I agree. Same. Um, I kind of got to a point where it felt like it was good. they were like the the first round draft swaps for for the two picks, fifteen and thirteen, where it was going to happen from the way it sounded. Um. Considering that it seemed like the Packers had no potential, the yeah the Packers. The, a lot of people thought you know the Packers weren't going to get any value in a Rodgers trade because he only wanted to play for the Jets. If not, he'll retire and the, all the money situation. So I think both yeah the both teams kind of got it well and the the next year's second turning into a first if he plays obviously. If he's going to play that many snaps, you'd expect them to be in a playoff situation if he's going to be playing at Aaron Rodgers type of play. Even last year, if Aaron Rodgers played the way he did in Green Bay on the Jets, that that's probably what a number three team in the AFC, if I had to guess. Because Rodgers, I mean, he didn't play horrible. Like He had moments here and there, but it's still, you know, he played okay. And something interesting, too, with his contract a majority of his contract is now a signing bonus so the jets actually clear some cap like he's only going to cost them on the cap like 15 million so he's not cap straining them really at all which is a good thing so they could probably go out and still sign a couple free agents i don't know 100 percent what the cap situation for the jets are but now that Rodgers is officially there, you're not telling me some vets that are still around might want to go sign to that team and, you know, either help boost up their defense. Like maybe a guy like Akeem Hicks, you know, looking for a ring, you know. So it, it'll be interesting to see how that route goes and if they want to take that route with any players because, I mean. The Jets. Who, who, who would? The, the Jets are currently sitting at $15 million. In free cap? Yeah. And that but, and that's in, is that but, that's including Rogers, correct? I would assume. It, well, this is before. This is oh, like a month so ago. Might, this is a month ago, uh, and it says it's not including Lazard's deal, nor is it including the eventual Rogers deal. Oh, so they have no money. They needed they. Yeah. Well, then that's probably a good thing, though, that they traded away some of the picks and also went back in the draft because I'm sure. That was taking into consideration some of the draft money you'd have to give to potential, you know, draftees, because that's normally how those um, spot rack or whatever contract place you're looking at, they normally take that into consideration and 
give it some type of value. I don't know how they do it, but normally that's they do that. So maybe that helped too, getting some of those picks gone in some way. So yeah, I guess they don't have money or if they maybe they do something to try to make some splashes, but I doubt it. It's pretty solid team head to toe and you know now they have the fifth they have a 15th overall pick. I think they still go with what we kind of are projecting with an offensive tackle. That just seems like the smart move for them. It's kind of what we project in our mock draft and what at least if I were to make another one on this day right now, I'd probably still have them go offensive tackle. Yeah, I would too. And you know, they they with that draft swap that only moves them back two spots, um with only the Packers and Patriots kind of ahead of them and more than likely I don't think I mean there's a chance both those teams could take a tackle but I don't see that happening so I think they could still easily get whoever they're wanting at 13 if he's still I mean there if he would have been there at 13 but I think it helps the Packers a lot because that puts them two step two picks closer to potentially still being able to get Jackson Smith and the Jigba who I think would probably be maybe priority number one or two on their draft board at about where they're at. Um, I, I've seen a lot of draft mock drafts that have them go into the Packers. Yeah, I, th- I think around there would be a good spot for them. And I, I mean, I can see Tennessee, Houston, or the Packers. That, you know, that's 11, 12, 13 right there. Take him. Um, one, because it's about maybe where his value's at of where to take him. And two... All three of those teams really need, I think, a receiver. When you look at Tennessee, they, I mean, Traylon Burks, who they drafted last year, didn't turn out. They have no other receivers. Um, no matter what, if they want to give Ryan Tannehill an, another year, if they want to draft somebody, I think a receiver would probably be a bigger priority right now than a quarterback. And you can argue offensive tackle or offensive lineman in general for that team. So I think it'll probably end up being one of those two positions. And then Houston, they need a little bit of everything. And there's, I mean, we can get into this here in a second, but, like, the rumors of what they're going to do it to or if they even stay it to or if they take a quarterback at 12, I think getting a quality receiver like Nijig, but no matter what they do elsewhere would be good if they don't trade or anything like that. I mean, yeah, it's Jackson Smith, Jackson Smith, Nijig, but just somewhere between 11 and 13. I don't think he – get if he's there at 13, I don't think he's, he'll be there after that pick. I think that would be a good pickup for them, unfortunately being someone who at one time wished the Bears got Najigba and also don't want to see the Packers have another weapon. Yeah. I, I, would like but, to, I would like to think the Titans would go for one, but they have a lot of holes. So. Yeah, that's true, especially with kind of the cutting they did. And, I mean, whether you want to believe the reports or not, they, like, have been potentially trying to get figure out if they want to keep Tannehill, Derrick Henry. It's just – a whole big mess right now in Tennessee it feels like they could I mean yeah they could go a lot of different directions we originally um, had them getting Skaronski yep but which is a good pick but they also are dying at receivers so oh yeah it's like at that point it just becomes who do you have being a very like in the Tennessee situation with having the kind of holes they have is like Who's just the best overall prospect you have on your board? You got to take. You know, it's almost like they have to take best available because. Then their line's completely falling apart. Oh yeah, the they little, cut the little they had. Yeah, I mean they went and got Andre Dillard from the Eagles to play left tackle, but <laughs> who's gonna play the other four spots? You know, yeah. they went out, got rid of Ben Davis or Nate Davis, Ben Powers. Or not Ben Powers, gosh. But they got rid of most of their offensive line. Ben Jones is who I was thinking of. I met Ben Powers went to Denver. Which, hey, speaking of lines that might be better, Denver spent a lot of money. But they don't have a first round pick, so who, why talk about why talk about the Denver Broncos right now when they don't have a first to talk about? But uh, I mean let's get I mean we can kinda get into it since we mentioned it. Um there's a lot of speculation about what these first several Picks might be in this year's draft more it seems like more than most years just because I think the media is just at this point going crazy about it because they're bored to death and have nothing to talk about so they're maybe starting rumors it feels like someone is at least so well that uh, there's like a slight rumor and they run with it 
Yep. Or it's just an NFL team hoping someone slides. Um, what's funny is what we're about to talk about is C.J. Stroud. For the longest time, he he was like the pa- the Panthers quarterback. Unless you're ta- Frank Reich, it seemed like he wanted Anthony Richardson more. But it seemed like C.J. Stroud, they maybe all agreed with from the way they looked at his pro day and everything else. But within a like one or two day kind of period, it, these S2 scores, the cognitive test scores that NFL teams have been using for several years now were supposedly leaked and C.J. Stroud was reportedly in the 18th percentile in scores with Bryce Young being, what, the 99th percentile, 98th percentile. And that got a lot of things stirring around and people started talking about CJ Stroud in a very negative sense and people thought he might fall. What's interesting about that, the, I don't remember if it is 100% the exact same day, but Ballard, Chris Ballard in New, in Indy came out and said everybody's lying at this time of day or around this time i thought it was pretty interesting that that rumor came out the same day or around the same day 24 hour period that he said that i'm not saying he started it but it's kind of you know that's i'm sure a guy indy would love for them to fall to him or to indy i mean you being the colts fan would you know seeing all these rumors that have came out and it has the person who makes the eds to or one of the founders of S2 Cognitive Test, has came out and said that's not... The scores that were leaked aren't 100% accurate. Um, Obviously, he can't say that CJ Stroud's score was not... what That wasn't his score, but we all know that he's inferring that that wasn't his score. Would you still... If, if CJ Stroud's there at four, is that, is that who you hope the Colts take? <laughs> if... A player like C.J. Stroud's at four, yeah, it's automatic. Um, I, I'll still say that Stroud and Young are really the only two quarterbacks I'm completely sold on. Um, yeah. Obviously, Young's height and looking like a stick, but everyone wants to talk about Richardson's uh, his floor being really high yeah maybe but he's also only played 13 games in his college career so that's a a bigger gamble than it seems and then Levis I mean he's been he's been getting props from like Peyton Manning oh yeah so I don't I, I've, I've I, heard if, if, yeah if Stroud's at four yeah that's that's a blessing if if I mean I, they're at four, and obviously five quarterbacks won't go, but between the potential top five quarterbacks, Young, C.J. Stroud, Anthony Richardson, Will Levis, Hendon Hooker, right, rank those in order of, like, you want the Colts to draft them, if you know what I'm saying. Um, About in the order you said. So, yeah. Yeah, Stroud, Young, Richardson. <sighs> Richardson and Levis are actually really close to me, and a lot of people don't have them that close. But it seems like um, you either love Levis, Levis has a cannon. He, he, he reminds me a lot of Jared Allen. You mean Josh Allen? Yeah, I don't know. Why I said Jared. Jared Allen, the defensive end <laughs> from Minnesota and no. Kansas City. Josh, which there's a few of them. Yeah, there are. I mean, hey, there's even there's even a center in the NBA right now. Yeah. But yeah, Josh Allen. Um, yeah. And yeah. Then Hennon, I mean, Hennon, Hennon Hooker. I think he definitely will be something. Um, obviously, I don't know exactly his progress on his injury, but. Oh yeah, that that's we, the big we, question mark with him. Yeah, we made a. We made a, a gamble and had him going to the to Baltimore. Oh yeah, which he could in theory, but he probably will fall. Especially um, with the talks really not going good with Lamar. But oh yeah, I yeah, mean he'll de- he'll definitely be something. Yeah, I th- I think 
I mean, I, I think you could maybe, I don't know, uh, depending on what his health is, somewhere where he can maybe sit a year or two or even just a year behind somebody could be great. And looking at kind of, I mean, I just keep, I, I really think Seattle might be the perfect place for him. I don't know why I think that, but. I think it would too, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, no, but they also have an early second round pick where if he does fall to the second round, might be a good place for him. Or, I mean, a team trades late into the first round, depending on how the rest of the draft goes. Because it's this is supposedly, too, a very... Reports are calling this a very front-loaded first round where there's a lot of high top prospects, but the rest of the first round, people are saying won't be as good. I mean, obviously, hindsight will be twenty twenty here in a year or two. On yeah, that, it's, but, it's usually what they say though. Every yeah, year. but I uh, mean, it, it's yeah. it's tough with Hooker though. If it, it kind of drives me nuts, but if he wasn't hurt and didn't have that injury, he would be probably number three quarterback prospect. Oh, yeah, people Richardson. kind of forget that Tennessee team was balling before he got hurt. I mean, they ended that's, up losing to Georgia, but... That's what I'm saying. So he's yeah. a great quarterback. He could even be... Uh, he could be better than all of them. He could be. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the fun thing about um, quarterback draft classes when there's a lot of guys is most of the time it's the one that... It's the one or two that are slept on. You know, looking at 2018, Josh Allen was, what, the third quarterback taken? Yeah, I wasn't high on him at all. Lamar Jackson was taken 32nd overall. Baltimore traded back in the first round to take him when guys like Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, and Josh Rosen were all taken around the top 10. I think Josh Allen was taken just outside of the top 10, but... Those four guys went early in the first, and then, you know, team swoops in to get him to, you know, not only take him and stop him from going elsewhere, but, hey, you take a guy in the first round, you get you get the fifth-year option on the dude, too, which, for the Ravens' case, maybe made things a little harder to resign, but still, that's beside the point. You, that's why you kind of maybe see some of these teams swoop in and move up a couple of spots in the first. And this seems like a draft where maybe, depending on how GMs feel late in the draft, that don't have a guy left to trade out and a guy and a team comes in and takes a guy like Kenan Hooker or if any of the other QBs fall. It, it seems like that kind of draft where we might see that happen. If the reports, if you want to believe the reports that this is a light draft class, which I trust GMs more than anyone else talking and they're not, and the GMs aren't going to talk. That's just a matter of how things work at this time is the people who actually know aren't saying anything. Like It's a business. Oh, yeah, it, it's a business, and you're not going to, you gonna, know. Uh, yeah, you're not going to let your competitors know your secrets and ruin your business. It's, it's yeah, the I, same with football. In reality, I think I, I, wouldn't, I would be surprised – if the first overall pick isn't already decided, and it wasn't decided a month ago, but the only people who know, yeah, that's why the first the first overall picks always like automatically in as soon as the the team. Uh, it, actually, they they normally take their sweet time, you know, seeing if there's any late offers. I mean, every year's different, but from my recollection, well, I've yeah, maybe that's not true. But you know they already have it set. I, they oh, just yeah. let it wind down a little bit just to talk. Yeah, I mean, and 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 same with second overall. I do I do do I want to believe the reports that they're not looking at a QB? Maybe, but are they really gonna let something like that out unless it's just rumors or trying to get people to talk? Or I mean, I saw one thing today that potentially. The Panthers and Texans are letting these rumors go out to try to confuse each other. <laughs> I I I just wouldn't believe anything you hear unless it's from a handful of people, and even then, don't believe everything they say. NFL insiders, only the top NFL insiders who actually have really good sources, and they're also not going to be saying like 
the big juicy stuff right now they're gonna they're literally gonna hold on to that until pretty much the team drafts them yeah they already yeah. have everything figured out oh yeah like, i mean that's why of, yeah they don't really talk though like about like what they obviously they have the cameras and stuff but i'm sure they're yeah. really just like all right we're getting ready to call them yeah let them put the pick in yeah, and obviously players who talk to these teams know that a team's interested in them. That's especially why I hate... First, especially the first two picks. The second pick is like, all right, obviously he's going to get taken in the first round. If he do, Or the first pick. If he magically doesn't, then we're automatically taking him. But Yeah. If, I mean, some, some years are different than others. Well, but, yeah. like, what was it, 2019... When Burrow, no, it was 2020. When Burrow, Chase Young, and Jeff Okuda were one, two, three. Like we, we knew for a while that was going to be the order, but mostly because we knew since we needed quarterback, Chase Young was a, you know, a defensive, you know, prospect that you couldn't turn down. And Okuda, it's kind of the same situation. The lines needed defense, and but, most most times than not the. First four or five picks are given. It, it seems like in recent history. Yeah, I mean, 2018 was probably the one year I can think of where the first five picks weren't as much of a like what's uh, maybe even 2017, the year before that. Um, at least when I look at look at it back, I want I at least wanted Deshaun Watson in Chicago, and I thought he was going to be the pick over Mitch, but <laughs> I was wrong about that. Um, you know how the Bears work. Oh yeah, they always take the wrong guy. Which, hey, hopefully in twenty twenty one they didn't. But Kevin White. I don't want to talk about Kevin. Hey, Kevin White wasn't bad. He just was injury riddled. He was horrible even when he was. Yeah. But hey, it happened. At least the Bears aren't the worst at drafting. But then again, they also like to trade their picks so they can't even get to draft. Um, that's right. That's Ryan pays for you, and yeah, he like, was not my favorite GM. They like to build a defense up and then let it fall, and then build it back up and let it fall. Yeah, he he definitely put them in a horrible position. But hey, the Bears are you know back. They have plenty of picks. Um, they 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 seem to be trending in the right direction. I mean, we'll see about that. I'm excited to see what they do at nine, or not? Question mark. I mean, the rumors always kind of been they'll trade down again. I doubt it. They seem to be okay to bank the pick at nine, and they have a couple guys. Um, the uh, assistant GM, I guess, came out earlier and said, "Don't be surprised if they take running back." Um, Who said that? Uh, the Ian Cunningham, the Bears' assistant GM. I mean, obviously, he's not going to be giving anything away, so that's probably a smokescreen. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, these are GMs we're talking about. Are they going to do their job 100%? No. But I think, as fans, we shouldn't ridicule these. Unless it's, a, like, a team with, like, a really good quarterback takes another quarterback in a situation where it does make sense. Like, say the Chiefs take a quarterback at 31. Like, that'd be a horrible move, but... For the most part, I don't think we should be ridiculing these picks until we start to see these players on the field. Like hindsight, a lot of times they do ridicule. They end up being pretty good picks. I feel like. Yeah, because a lot of times they look them as raw talent instead of what they've accomplished. Yeah. Yeah, and like they've had interviews with them more than anyone else will have interviews with them. They've watched more film than anyone else on the planet has watched film they i mean there's a reason why teams have literally a whole office full of scouts in different regions so it's they try to cover as much ground as they can and make the right picks and you know sometimes they even ask players about how they feel about certain guys if it's like the same group or hey watch some film on this like you know if if you're a veteran in a team like i know i was listening to uh New Heights, you know, the Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey podcast. And, you know, Jason Kelsey, 
was asked about certain linemen and watch film and stuff, like whether they're going to take his input or not. Like it's the fact that they're getting as much intel as they can from other sources that like I trust them a lot more to make that pick than any other Twitter GM. To, that's gonna end up ridiculing a pick, and is it gonna? Do they end up needing the ridicule? Maybe, maybe not. But just wait a year or two until the player starts playing the ridicule. Like everyone ridiculed the Patriots last year when they took Cole Strange, and Cole Strange, a D two lineman, and look, he might have been the less, the best lineman out of last year's draft. So I that's, like that's that. all I'm trying to say. Yeah, I always like to see D two players go. One that always comes to mind, Ali Marpet, who's actually, I believe, a D3 player that went in the second round for the Bucks, who actually just retired, I believe, last offseason after some kind of health issues. So his name kind of thinks, I mean, there's there's always a couple guys. D2 guys, you know, back in the day um, for HBCUs, I think of, you know, um, Walter Payton at Jackson State. I mean, obviously, he was still a top five pick. I think he actually went third overall. But, you know, it's it's kind of crazy what – you know NFL GMs and scouts have to do to make sure they get the right pick. So whoever whoever the bear whoever the Bears draft, I will cherish. And will I buy their um, jersey? No, probably not. But I, I'll, I'll have I'll follow I'll follow them on Twitter right away. How about that? Mm-hmm. But but that's all we have for you today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Hit that feedback hit the bell hit it hit everything just 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 hit it and um you know all, you know social media is always linked down below keep an eye on those uh, go follow our tiktok those we're trying to get it to where we're posting daily but hey just we're posting stuff go watch it like it comment it we're getting a lot of feedback on some of our stuff so you know be one of those people who ridicule us since that's all we're getting is ridicule <laughs> but hey it's fine um and just look keep a lookout on for our for our draft um tonight when this comes out our draft live draft show should be fun come just if if you don't know anything about football maybe ask some questions too i'm sure maybe we can answer some of those so it's going to be on youtube forward youtube.com forward slash youtube or not forward slash youtube forward slash audible sportscast and hey if you're watching this on youtube just click on our account on the youtube and it'll be there. Not ready to watch, but there should be a uh, a thing telling you to. It's scheduled to come out later that day. But hey, just something to keep on your calendar. But hey, see you. See, talk to y'all later. Have a good weekend. Thanks for listening to Audible Sportscast, your home for all things sports. <laughs>